So yeah, welcome everybody to part 5 of my solo cell phone conjurer. We are gonna do act 7 today. And then we're basically done with normal, right? I'm gonna proceed over and edit. Alright, so last stream we managed to get the full Praetorian face guard on it. And also, I wanted to craft like a diamond, a prismatic diamond for this as well. Because it's like one of the best components in the game actually, like even endgame builds use it. And I was able to get the blueprint right for it. I just need 12 seals, so I'm gonna um, show you guys the best way or like the best place to farm seals as well because I need 3 more right. So I might do those anyways before proceeding in Act 7 right. So basically you go over to the Asikorn Valley over here and um, you go down to the tomb over here, the tomb of uh, Kovac, right? And also there's a totem here, right? I mean, yeah, the totem is kind of debating me here. <laughs> I don't want to do the totem, but I mean, it's a totem, right? You gotta do the totem. I got privated here, right? Like, totems aren't as... I mean, they're still worth it on, like, like any difficulty, I feel like. Um, but for me personally, they would only be worth it on, like, the higher difficulties, like, ultimate. To get the new legendary items, right? But yeah, over here, in this tomb, and, like, also in front of this tomb, you're gonna have lots of uh, Bloodsorn cultists, right? And these guys have, like, uh... Well, they're, like, the only guys that basically drop these Chthonian, um... Seas of Binding, right? And these actually scale to my level here, to say level 60, I mean 56. So it's pretty perfect, actually. Let's get a couple of these guys here and hope for some seals. There's one, there's two. Hey, Dead of the Year and Red Ball League, how are you guys doing? Welcome, welcome. Hope you guys have a nice Saturday. Where is it going? Why is it going? Where, where to is it going? Oh yeah, three and four, like, we needed only three, right? But I mean, might as well farm some more here, since this is kind of a good place to check them out, right? Also, I haven't been here yet, right? So, yeah. This place is more interesting in Ultimate, because um, you get also, like, a item that you need for one of the hidden quests as well. These, um, what's it called? Stormheart, right? Unless we have a totem here again, that's pretty nice. Another totem. <laughs> just go to Greenland, you're gonna be safe there. Uh, just you wait, Greenland is gonna have the first case of Corona as well soon. What about the Antarctica, right? Maybe Antarctica. Uh, 9.5k hit points is very high, level 56. Kinda, yeah. It's definitely not low. <clears throat> but I mean, I'm a Shaolin, right? And I have Heart of the Wild, so this gives me like lots of HP already. Just for like one point. And also, I have Praetorian set, like Praetorian 3 piece, also gives me pretty decent HP. Right, if I were to take this off, um, you can see that like every single piece here gives me some HP, right? Yeah, it's like 8k without it, right? So the set alone gives me like 1.5k. Like 
quick see of the skills. Oh yeah, um, we can... So yeah, the rest of this place, um, like the undeads here, aren't really very interesting, they're kinda whatever. There's like a, a purple sideboss here, but he doesn't really have a exclusive item or anything, so he's kinda whatever. Um, let's go over here on it. How will the earth, sh earth shaker? Um, there is one hidden chest over here though. Yeah, this area also has like another quest for you if you are side of the commons chosen. And if you're like, I don't know, you need to be like honored, I believe, to unlock the quest that requires you to like go here. I mean, you can't see that there are some areas here, right? It's kind of uh, spoiled already. But yeah, we are not side of the commons chosen here, so we're not gonna go there. We're just gonna check out the rest of this uh, visible area here. You were interested in starting QE, now with the new league, watched some streams and lost all the interest again. <laughs> yeah, same, I, I watched some streams as well, like yesterday after my stream, and I was like, well, okay, I mean, still the same game, right, that I didn't really like too much last time I played. I mean, it's not a bad game, yeah, I just prefer Grim Dawn, to be honest. Pew is definitely not a bad game. Anyways, we have enough seals, right? And I'm gonna craft the diamond now. Yeah, no, no worries, crap people. You can always ask anything. I mean, I can always, like, cut... Um, ...these delays from my YouTube anyways later on. So we needed 12 seals to craft a arcane spark, right? And I think we got the blueprint for arcane spark, right? We bought that one on the last stream as well, right? Uh, let me check here. So Arcane Spark, yeah, we bought this one and we also bought Prismatic Diamond. So we are officially allowed to craft Arcane Spark and Prismatic Diamond. So Arcane Spark, yeah, needs uh, 12 seeds of binding, 4 chilled steel, 4 soul shards for ectoplasm. I mean, I should have those in stash, to be honest, like my personal stash. Let me double check for you guys. Um, but yeah, like, uh, yeah, enough of those, right? Enough of those, and what was the last thing? I don't remember. Ah, yeah, Ectoplasm, right? 20 of those. Do they only use two skills at every char? I don't know. No, most of them use more than two skills, but. You just spam two skills, right? One movement speed, like one movement ability and one other ability. And yeah, we crafted these two on the last stream, actually. And also nine. Aether shards. Okay, I need to craft one more Aether shard, right? And we have uh, 55 crystals, so that's fine. And now we have a diamond. And this diamond is really good. Because, I mean, it doesn't... It's like even better for a mental damage builds, obviously, but it gives you 4% HP, 50% uh, vitality resistance. And the skill is really awesome. Like, whenever you below, uh, drop below 50% HP, you're gonna get 130 flat absorption. This is gonna absorb damage from every single at, like hit that hits you, right? Uh, for 8 seconds. And also, it's gonna increase your damage by 10% and your total speed by 10%. So this is especially good when you're playing like a casting or attack speed based character. Uh, we are neither of that, but I mean, it's still good. Absorption is always good. Also, we got another um, Night Blade item here, which is useless for us. And, yeah, we can finally start Act 7, right? Abusers already. I mean, if you if you got the item, right? You should use it. If I didn't, like, get the item offered for me, to me and the Ancient Grove, I wouldn't have used it. But, I mean, if I get it, I should use it. And, I mean, like, everybody else who gets it this early should also use it, right? So yeah, we're gonna... Oh yeah, we, we chose Bismil back after... So you've chosen like back in uh, episode one, yes. right? When we I have been tasked with preparation killed Krieg the battle. to get the Vanish um, the lady of has decreed that skill we here. Gather powerful... So we're gonna do the... 
Um, doesn't mean I'll skill down here now. There are a couple of guards that you can speak to here as well. This guy is a little bit mysterious, but I mean, uh, you will see later what's up with this guy, right? He's gonna give you like a crappy item now and like a better item later. Also, you have this quest, and there's another quest over here as well. You should grab up, like, grab all these quests, right? Don't forget any of these. Hey, K, okay, Mr. KK. KK1984. Welcome to the stream. Uh, what would I say is the ideal stage for tackling the Avatar of Mongolian in normal hardcore? Uh, whenever you feel strong enough. I mean, on normal, I would say like Mokjogan, I don't know, I mean, <laughs> you need to be level 100 anyways and like have cleared everything in ultimate main campaign story, I would say. Then you're maybe strong enough to kill Mokjogan in normal. I think if you're like able to kill, like if, you, if you've managed to like kill things in ultimate, right, like act bosses in ultimate. Then you might be strong enough for more than normal. And like act by act bosses, I mean like harder act bosses, like Act Six act boss, right? In Crown Hell or like the one in over here as well. If you've been able to beat those in ultimate, then you're probably um, like strong enough to kill more than normal as well. I have actually no idea though, because I've personally personally never done more than normal ever, so I have no idea. But um, maybe we should try that as well once we're like strong enough with this, with this character, right? I just wanted to give you like a <laughs> uh, safer instruction, right? Because I don't want you to die. At least I have the tutorial disabled, yeah. <laughs> of course. Not like somebody else that we both know. I don't know, like, um, I just told you, like, the way how to kill him, um, in a way to be, like, better safe than sorry, right? Um, but that's also with, like, my very limited experience of, like, killing him on normal, like, I have no idea how strong he, or how weak he is on normal. I can only imagine him being, like, way stronger than everything else on normal, always there. Um, but I don't really know, like, how strong he is compared to, like, Elite or Ultimate content. I would say he's probably as strong as like ultimate mm, campaign content, right? Like as strong as like the easier stuff in ultimate, basically. And also, crap, Mr. Crap people, if you uh, are interested in like an end game, what to build, right? I have uh, a video for. Basically are the same conjurer as well for endgame. I think I'm in max conjurer already. Which is arguably not even that hard to put together because you have lots of like target farmable stuff. Create and color guard, yeah those two are like the toughest enemies, definitely. So like basically the two super bosses of the Forgotten Gods expansion. Hello Sirius Dan, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Nice to see you. Nice to see you uh, catching my stream earlier this time than yesterday. Yeah, if you haven't fought them, especially... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Create is only um, fightable on ultimate anyways, right? But Kalagadra should be a thing on normal as well. I mean, Kalagadra is basically like Ravager, but a little bit harder. Uh, and you have to usually like cut her around even more than you have to cut around with Ravager. But I feel like it's as easy or even easier to cut around other Kalagadra than to cut around Ravager. It's just that like face tanking her is even harder than face tanking Ravager. And like face tanking Ravager is uh, not easy at all. Like, face tanking Kalagadra, at least on Ultimate, I think only like a couple of retaliation builds are like able to do that. And maybe like a Bagothian Blade Master on Softcore.
I dropped really good gear. I mean, Kalagajo drops the... Basically the best helmet for retaliation builds. Mm, or like for most retaliation builds at least. And Crate... Crate is kinda like John Bourbon to be honest. It's more about the challenge than the item. The crate has a meme item that drops kinda. Like you get the... Well, you'll see for yourself, right? I mean, yeah, true. Vitality builds with like triple bismuth or weak hazard, that's true. I have like insane fizz rest, man. like 60 or 70% fizz rest or something like that. Right? Hmm. Let's do it like this. I kind of want to max out entangling vines as well, right? So we only have to kill these watchers for the blood of the watchers, right? We don't really have to like kill the boss of this dungeon. Um, but since if you're side of the Solar, for example, for example, you are required to kill the boss of this dungeon. Um, I'm still gonna like do a full clear here and kill the boss as well, just to like show you the boss. Going to ask if Crucible or Shadow Realm has a chance to drop Kalagato's item? Uh, no. Like, Shadow Realm and Crucible can drop monster frequents from dungeons, like roguelike dungeons, such as uh, Alchemos stuff, or. Um, I don't know if it, it can drop, like, stuff from the new dungeon, though, from, like, uh, Morgneth dungeon. I'm not sure about that. I don't know also about. Um, what's it called? Gargabolt's pistol? You guys probably know that more than me because you guys play more Crucible. At least Arcane does. But uh, you definitely cannot get um, items from super bosses such as Karagadra, Nogjog, and the Ravager. I mean, you also cannot get like Locker set there either, for example, or the item from the crate boss. Also, this temple has a shrine, which you should pick up and you shouldn't miss. But I mean, it's like kind of impossible to miss this one, right? Because it's like literally in front of the boss. Or, like almost in front of the boss. Outcast Secret and Crucible. Uh, why is this being buggy? Okay, yeah, sometimes this game is loud. Okay, it's not like this. There we go. So yeah, this guy, um, he can be pretty crazy because he can like stun you, right? And he can reduce your resistances, he can reduce your DA as well. Um, but if you just kill him fast enough, right, um, he's not gonna do those skills on you. But that said, if you're fighting him, um, Check out your like debuff bar over here, and if you have like bunch of bunch of debuffs on you, and you're starting to like take ridiculous damage for some reason, that's probably because he debuffed you, and then you should start to run around, like start to run around and try to not get hit by any like lightning projectiles as well, because those can be pretty annoying as well. Tangling ones are OP, by the way. If you play retaliation, yes. I mean, there's 
they're like pretty strong, no matter what type of bird to be honest. What happened to Lulson? Um, I mean, they're gonna ded uh, dedicate like another four months, I believe, to like bug fixing. And then they're gonna start their first league. So, I don't know, maybe it's worth it to check it out again once they like release the first league. We'll see. And hey, Osterius and Lucas, how are you guys doing? Welcome, welcome. Adamic Hiltan had your button mage when it was a Space Gorge 1. Good question. I actually don't know. It wasn't that good, I believe. It was definitely more than 30 seconds, probably. But to be honest, I don't, I don't even know if I actually tested it out or not. Like, this Space Scorch variant uh, didn't really last very long for me, right? Did they delete all the characters? No. No, no, but I mean, if once they do a uh, season, they are... Um, I mean, you're not gonna be able to like play seasonal content with your like pre-seasoned characters anyway, right? You'd have to like do new characters for seasons, just like in Diablo or Path of Exile anyway, right? So that's like the way how they are like gonna fix people duping gold, etc., right? Like duping all the crafting mats, etc. Hey Zempa, how are you? Planning a new build? What what is it gonna be? Reset enemy actions. I mean, oh yeah, that's true as well. That's that's pretty good. Yeah. That's like uh, kind of like city disruption in a way, right? Because of the immobilization, right? It's, I mean, it's not the same as skill disruption, but it's kind of similar, right? And hey, Nola gamer, how are you? Started your conjurable. It's coming along well. I have a question about attack. Lay down sigil and then spam box and local swarm until everything dies. Uh, pox, you mean? Well, basically, yeah. I mean, you. It's a kind of a lazy build, you know, so you just have to, like. It's like a piano build because you have, like, lots of abilities, but it's also a lazy build, right? You just have to, like, lay down all your abilities, like, spam them all in, like, one place and then try to, like, stand on that place as well and keep your enemies in that place, right? And then you. Or you walk around, I don't know. Depends on like how you wanna play it, right? or, like which enemies you face. But yeah, you just throw down all your abilities and uh, wait for enemies to die, right? <laughs> Crocorona. <laughs> so yeah, the build has basically like very good stationary AoE, right? That's like that's uh, main strength, I would say. I mean, yeah, I mean, I've eaten crocodiles as well. I didn't get crocorona. At least not so far. Also, like, crocodiles just taste like chicken, to be honest. It's like, not even that much different. Wait, isn't there like a devouring swarm helm here in Act 7 that I might be interested in? Maybe a scarab shell. Hmm. I mean, this one seems really good when you're playing like a bleeding trickster, right? Really nice for bleeding tricksters. Oh yeah, we should also like hand in some quests here maybe. Like this one. Serb. Serb. Uh, usually it's better to wait for this stuff until you are at like the Colorant Sands Rift right? Or actually like until you are um, at the Karen Docks Rift right? Once you've done this quest as well. The Anorak quest right? Uh, that's a lot to stay. Actually, it doesn't really matter at all. I feel like I have no idea. Serb. To be honest. 
I didn't realize, or like, I didn't notice any difference whether or not you allowed, allowed them to, to stay or not, right? Um, we can give them the Blood of the Watchers now, or like a little bit later. I still don't have the Sport. I wanna go to the Sport first, like, do those quests maybe as well. Because the next quest from Bismillah is gonna require me to go to, like, a Rift, right? And, uh... I don't know, I might forget about my personal Rift by then. So I just wanna continue here for now. This one is Bismiel. Um, I chose Bismiel after Act 1, after Kate Krieg, just in order to get the Spanish um, augment. So I got the Spanish augment like after I killed Krieg, right? That's why I chose Bismiel. Um, I like the Shadow Strike. Other than that, there is not really any reason. I mean, you can go for like whichever you movement ability you would like to have, right? Also, there's a small secret passage here, and we can check it out as well. And this one is required to be done to access the uh, fifth roguelike dungeon as well, right? The, what's it called? Tomb of the Heretic, right? And the Lost Oasis. So you can go here now or later, it doesn't really matter to, to be honest too much. Um, if you don't know how to get here first, um, you can just do like main campaign stuff first, right, and then um, you will get like a quest from Riggs later, and he's basically gonna like, well, tell you where to go. Uh, it's not that easy to follow the clues, but you would be able to manage and find uh, the areas yourself. Or, well, or you just go here, right? Because you know them now, anyway. They buffed Seal of Corruption? Yeah, that's true, they buffed it. I don't know, is it gonna be good, though? I mean, it, it's a good buff for builds that used uh, Seal of Corruption to proc things, right? It's kind of fine for those kind of builds, right? All the other builds, um, yeah, they're still not gonna use it, right? Next patch in three months from now. Possibly, right? We don't know. Unless there are still some like persisting bugs, they are not gonna do a 1.1.6.3, right? Yeah, they still remove the RR, so, um, like, overall, see if Corrosion is still nerfed, like, the, the small buff they gave it now is, like, like, overall, it's still a nerf, obviously. It's just, like, a small compensation for builds that still need to use it for, like, proking uh, devotions, for example, right? Like, every build that doesn't need it for proking devotions, well, you're not gonna use it, right? So hey Carbor, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Oh shit, he's a fast flapper. Also this guy drops the second seal of Morganath, which is one of the three seals that you need to open the way to the Lost Oasis. And also in, I don't know, does he drop it in normal as well? I'm not sure. Maybe he drops like the 75 version on... Uh, probably he only drops 75 version on Elite, right? This one has like a uh, monster ring frequent legendary as well. But I think only level 75 and 94 versions exist of that item, so we're not gonna get one here at level 57, right? The Warring Swarm Helm has Fizzeress as well. Oh, it's minus Fizzeress. Oh, it's the. Oh, yeah, it's the Archon one, right? Or like the uh, the one that you would like to use when you're playing a Avenger set, right? Avenger set, Water or Archon. Oh, it's not too good then, but... So you got this big chicken here. Well... He died.
Yeah, my Lightning Ray, Mage Hunter. I mean, you can play it without Velger Ham, to be honest. You can play it without it. But it's better with Ravager Ham, yeah. Also, my, um, my Saboteur is using Ravager Ham as well. <coughs> um, I mean, you could also use another item itself on that bot as well, but you don't have to. I mean, um, but Ravager Ham would be better. Also, we found this Rift here, right? Corbin Sands Rift. There's nothing really of interest here besides the the T-Rex, right? And we're gonna go over here, and this is where you will find the first seal of Morganath down here. And also, like you, you've made a Star Worm, uh, Star Wars Worm discovery. Also, you have a Fatten Mask here, which is a really good item, kinda. I mean, it got nerfed actually, right? This one doesn't have plus one Oscars anymore, or normal at least. Um, depending on like what item you have, like which helm you have right now. It might be good though, because it does give you like some HP and some vitality and elemental resistances. So it's not, still not too bad, it's just not... It's like worse than my Praetorian Helm right now, obviously. It's not <laughs> HD, ADHD like PoE. <laughs> Reminds me of D3 with more care. I mean, D3 is kinda ADHD as well, to be honest. This game is more like D2, I would say. Especially when it comes to like character building, when it comes to like. Yeah, like the. The, the depth of uh, character creation, right? Yeah, 75 and 94 versions of the assignment still have plus one Oscars. So this is still like a very good helm on Elite and Ultimate, especially on Elite I would say it's like the best power spike probably. I need to play Vanquisher. Uh, wait, which helm do you use then? I mean, before Vanquisher Helm, obviously, but I mean... Vanquisher Helm is like a level 94 one, right? Like, which item do you use on Vanquisher before Vanquisher? Maybe tomorrow you will continue? Simple. Oh, you killed a few hardcore characters when you were drunk, but what? <laughs> no. Also, I mean, yeah, these guys are really not that interesting to us, just skip them. Oh yeah, and they also play Vanquisher about, yeah, uh, Zoomer, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. They were talking about uh, ADHD gameplay, yeah. But to be honest, like, even Vanquisher is not that bad compared to what PoE, right? It's like slow gameplay compared to PoE. And, well, D3 is pretty fluent, yeah, D3 is uh, very smooth when it comes to combat, right? That's true, like, D3 combat is not really that bad, it's... It's actually pretty good. That's like the best thing about D3 is combat. Like combat smoothness and... Uh, that's like the, the best thing they did. In D3. Everything else in D3 is kinda... Mm, like the game plays itself too much. Because you don't have to think about gear choices too much from it. And yeah, I was... Like... Didn't like a D3 season start as well like yesterday. Season 20 or something. I don't know, I watched I watched like a random record video for some reason. I don't even know why I watched it to be honest. Um, where he was like talking about like all the like he was talking about his tier list for like season 20, right? And uh, like how the fuck does he know like a complete tier list of like all the builds? Like a day before the season starts, like what? I mean, I know he's like he has like access to PTR obviously, and uh, um, 
he has like lots of knowledge and uh, he can like do some assumptions, right? But I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. The bows must be like, like pretty easy to put together if he's like able to like figure out I don't know 50 plus bows like before they the patch even hit right like before the season even started right. And I mean obviously lots of people are gonna watch his video and be like well yeah okay or like they're gonna check out his video to like see which build they wanna play. Which again like fits the narrative of uh, the game playing itself for you and uh, like if it doesn't play itself for you already like like uh, if it still doesn't like play itself enough for you then you just watch Riker and then you like know how to play like 50 different builds already right like holy shit I don't know that's like crazy like, imagine something like this in Grim Dawn I mean yes you have similar things in Grim Dawn like some builds are super obvious and like some Praetorians have like some builds already made before the patch is actually out but like I don't know. Some builds still get figured out like two weeks after a patch, right? Right, <laughs> I'm a hater. <laughs> Come on. If I was hating on like D3, it would sound a little bit differently. Uh, oh wait, no, we're not gonna... This is where you... This is uh, the Sacrificial Altar, right? Um, you can only activate this if you have a Celestial Essence, right? And you will get Celestial Essences via like a random chest that can like spawn anywhere here right? in, in the whole act. Um, or by like killing Nemesis monsters. But yeah, I mean, we're not gonna kill Nemesis monsters anytime soon. And that's like, if you... Well, use the item there, then you were gonna spawn... You're gonna spawn Kalagadra. So like one of the hardest super bosses in the game. So yeah, don't just like randomly spawn her. You should be prepared to face her if you're gonna do that. Sacrifice yourself. <laughs> It draws from Roganath as well. Oh, it does? Nice. The builds are not accurate. Okay, well, I mean, that makes more sense now. Yeah, after like uh, watching his tier list a little bit longer, also, I got the impression that most of his like builds from the tier list are. It's just like the tier list from like the last season before that, right? And then like depending on like some nerfs or buffs, he's gonna like tweak them around a little bit. So, yeah. That's true, he's very, he's super casual. Like he's, he's like a casual for casuals, right? He's like a, he's trying to be like a, like the guy who puts out information for well, mostly casual people as well, and that's fine, I mean, he also, like, if you watch his streams, right, he's also, like, playing mostly only casual stuff, because that's, like, what interests, interest, like, most of the people, right, I mean, usually, like, in any game, it doesn't matter which game, right, like, 99% of people are gonna be, or, like, 90% of people are basically casuals, right, and that's, like, no, no shame in that, right, like, not, not everybody has as much time to, like, play games in general, or, like, a specific game because they want to play more than one game in like a year, right? So that's like totally, like perfectly understandable. I don't know nothing about D3 meta. And don't worry, I'm not gonna randomly stop playing D3 just because of Riker's video. As I said before, like I don't even know why I watched that video to be honest. Like it was just like my recommended and I, I, I got YouTube debated by it and I clicked on it and then I watched it. Because, uh, I don't know, Riker is... He's okay. He's okay. There another totem. Seems good. So, here under the Karen Dogs, right? Um, 
the one important thing that we got here is the shrine in the top left corner here, in the northern corner. And now we wanna check out, like, we wanna look for the next rift gate as well as a uh, tomb where you find Anorak's brothers, right? Also, these stars are still from, like, the Watchers, right? And I need, like, only three bloods. I have already six, so I don't need to farm them anymore, right? Promote Grim Dawn, too, so Grim Dawn is a casual game. I mean, just because he's promoting stuff for casuals doesn't mean that the games he does promote are casual games, right? I mean, even D3 is not a casual game. If you, like, invest lots of hours into it, you're not a casual anymore in that game, obviously. Like, being a casual or not a casual doesn't... I don't know, it's, it doesn't really have to do with the game, right? Like, games can be more casual-friendly or, like, less casual-friendly. But you can still be, like, a non-casual and a casual-friendly game and the other way around, right? Quinn's review of Wilson. That was pretty funny, yeah. Also, yeah, this is the tomb for the Anorak. Quest, right? See the warden horror. What's this? That's Warden Creek in real life. Did it appear you after reaching endgame? said Wilson is amazing. I mean, Wilson's amazing game, right? It just needs... This and that and that and this, right? It basically needs everything. Like, if it had everything it needed, then it would be an amazing game, right? To me, Rekker lost a lot of credibility when he heavily promoted Wilson. I mean, all of these big guys, right, they get like... How do you say that? They get like an offer, right? Hey, you wanna promote this game for us, right? And then they're gonna accept it, and they're gonna get money for it, and... Uh, they can't just like randomly... Not do that anymore, right? I mean, he could, like, deny that offer, obviously, but I mean, if it's, I mean, money talks, right? For most people, at least. And I mean, like, 90% of YouTubers, or like, big YouTubers and streamers, are kinda like that, right? I mean, not everybody, obviously, but many people. Yeah, this is uh, the Rune Augment from Bismuth. That's why I chose Bismuth, right, to get this Shadow Strike. Rules and resource requirements are too high and not optimized or both. I mean, that's like one of the 100 problems the game has, right? But yeah, it's a pretty big problem, to be honest. Like, Wilson could be way less laggy if it was like, properly programmed, right? I guess, I uh, maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's because of the engine, I have no idea, actually. No fucking clue, to be honest. I have a clue about this game, so I should talk about Grimdon, right? So you have a Tyrgon the Mad Priest, and this guy, um... Yeah, he, he throws, like, these, uh, snowballs under you in the first phase, and... They can, like, explode under you and, uh, hurt a lot, so... Try to dodge those, and, like, second phase has this... What ability that he, like, casted just before he died. And if you stand in the middle of that and get, like, hit by all the projectiles, you're gonna... Take lots of damage as well, so try to avoid those two abilities, right? And yeah, now we got everything we needed here that I told you guys earlier, right? So we can safely go back and hand in our quests now. <laughs> why, Nunu, why? I'm, really, I'm ripping out my hair!
General's Crust of Venom. I mean, these General's Crusts are pretty interesting, right? Because they do give you more experience gain. Like, this one gives me 5% uh, more experience gain, right? Um, which is good. But it's not worth, like, using this item over, like, another item that's even better. But sometimes it's, like, totally fine to use these items, right? They can have you, like, level a little bit faster. So, should we use this now? And lose plus two citrus of consumption because of that? That's the question, right? Do we want to sacrifice plus two citrus of consumption for that? Probably not. To be honest. Like, losing plus two citrus is gonna drop my uh, DPS, especially against bosses, right? And having more DPS means also I'm gonna, like, clear stuff faster, so level faster as well, right? Also, this guy is, like, a cool story Bob guy, right? He has, like, lots of lore if you're interested in that. But, yeah, once you found the mob enough, which we did, which we did, like, over here in the Corbin Sands, right? Were you, successful? Um, you can hand in a quest here and get some more experience, yeah, as well as reputation, right? Also, one thing to note is that on normal, um, Act 7 is not gonna give you, like, lots of experience, as you can see, right? Like, because Act 7 is designed to also be played after Act 1, and if you went here after Act 1 and these quests gave you, like, lots of experience, your experience curve would be fucked up. And because of that, now that we're level seven, uh, 57, these experience, I mean, these quests kinda give me, like, no experience. Um, they're still good to do for reputation, though. To, like, um, gain reputation with these factions. And, I mean, you need to do them for the storyline, kinda, anyway, so. Um, but yeah, don't expect, like, too much experience from these quests once you already cleared everything else in the game, right? Just craft a badge of mastery with plus 5 to sigil. <laughs> Just get lucky, right? But yeah, no, I mean, I wouldn't recommend investing into badge of mastery farming on your first character because you probably are gonna run out of, run out of mats before you have, like, any usable one, right? It might be okay to do it, actually, if you're, like, playing with your friends, right, in a 2 or 3 or 4 man group. And uh, everybody crafts like maybe 5 badges of mastery, and then you're gonna have like 20 badges of mastery, and... I mean, any... somebody in your group is gonna make use of, like, at least one medal, right? Hopefully. Which clone faction? Um, you have to each do separately, or get faction with all three at the same time. Um, all of the faction, I mean, all of the reputation um, quests are gonna give me, like, reputation with all three factions, right? Uh, but there are, like, some quests for, say, Bismil that give me, like, more reputation to Bismil and, like, less to these two, or, like, the other way around, right? So, um, <clears throat> also killing, like, average people, like, average enemies, like these guys here, are gonna give me, like, um, reputation towards all three factions as well. Um, so basically TLDR, I mean, you are gonna level up faster, or like get reputation faster with the faction that you chose, but you are gonna get reputation for all three of them at the same time. Just like more for the one that you chose. So if you do the Dreek, Dreek first, for example, um, you're gonna get more reputation with Dreek first and then less with the others. If you want to like balance things around a little bit more, you could, for example, choose well, Bismil or Normal, Dragon Elite, and like Soul Island Ultimate, right? And that way you, um, well, would like balance these reputation gains out a little bit more, I guess. Hello again. Um, you can change difficulty yourself, right, when you log out. Uh, just choose, like, another difficulty. 
And you will unlock other difficulties after killing Act 4 boss, after killing Logorian on the Tomb of the Watchers. After killing her or him or it, whatever, uh, in normal, you're gonna elite, uh, unlock elite, right? And if after killing him or it, whatever, on it, you're gonna unlock ultimate, right? And then you can just like, uh, in the main menu, click on elite, for example, or ultimate. And uh, yeah, that's how you like proceed with difficulties, right? In this game. Also, uh, I had this ring, right? It's pretty juicy. But I don't, I don't think I need to change it now. I think I just like my setup as it is, pretty much. Like, I, f I would lose, for example, stun resistance, right? Switching this out for the Thunderstruck ring, or I would lose, like, plus two bonuses to Sidra of Consumption if I switch it around for the other ring. Yeah, I, I don't know, like, my setup is really good as it is right now, let's say. Also, we have another totem here, you can see it on the map. I mean, on the mini-map, at least. On this map. Also, by the way, um... These totems, right? You are gonna be able to see them from further away on the big map if you have like everything cleared out. But if you haven't like everything cleared out and this totem spawns like in a black area, right, where you haven't been yet, um, you're gonna see them here before you see them here. But you have to like be a little bit closer than um, you would have to be when you have everything unlocked, right? Yeah, yeah, the the Cthon the uh, tentacle monster, that's uh, Logorian, yeah. That's the end boss of Act 4. Yeah, I, I would try Arcane. Wasn't that changed? I don't see no on the map anymore. Uh, it was a bug in 1.1.6.1, and apparently it should be fixed now, and it, you should see them again in 1.1.6.2, <clears throat> because we got a, yeah, the hotfix 1.1.6.2 is out ever since, uh, like, last night, right? <clears throat> I mean, it, it should be fixed. I don't know if it's really fixed. For me, it is fixed. It might not be fixed for you. I have no idea. Maybe maybe only like some of them are fixed and some of them are still not fixed. I have no clue, actually. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. Also, if you are sided with, I believe, Dreeg, you have like another quest in here in the Sanctuary, right? So, let me go into the Sanctuary of Horan here. For you guys, for everybody who's like joining Dreek. For Team Dreek, right? Also, uh, there is a shrine in there no matter what, right? So it's like worth it to go in there even if you're not signed with Dreek. Loker's the last boss? No, Loker's a side boss. Like, Loker is one of the uh, side hidden bosses. Celestia bosses, whatever you want to call it, super bosses. It's like the uh, probably like the easiest out of the super bosses. To be honest. Team Drig. Yeah, I like Drig the most as well. To be honest. I mean these these um. Which got factions that remind me of the Chaos Gods of Warhammer 40k, right? Um, you have Solaya, which is very similar to, to Korn, right? Like Blood for the Blood God kind of thing. Blood for... Blood for Solal. Then you have Dreek, which is very similar to Nurgle, obviously. And then you have Bismir, which is kind of like a combination of Slanesh and... Stench, or how do you call that? Stench? I don't even know how to pronounce it. I mean, you know which one I, I'm referring to, right? Stench? No idea. <laughs> the, the secret guy, right? The holder of keys, or whatever it's called, more than I have no clue. 
Is it good? Uh, I mean, the only Warhammer game I've ever played is Dawn of War. It is one of the best RTS games ever, in my opinion. Like Dawn of War 1. Other than that, I've not really played any Warhammer game, to be honest. But that was like enough to suck me into like Warhammer 40k lore. Hey Ash and Lake, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Uh, <clears throat> and since like... Basically Blizzard copied Warhammer in like so many ways, right? Like Starcraft and Warcraft. There are like so many Warcraft, uh, like Warhammer copies or like... References in Warcraft and Starcraft, right? It's... Um, it's pretty nice to like see the origin of like oh not or, like you to like know about the lore of Warhammer and then like to see all the parallels. <clears throat> What's a good level to start target farming? Uh, set gear. It depends. I mean, Creek set is like the earliest that you can like start farming for. Right? You can start farming for it on Elite at like. I don't know, level 80 plus or something, or like 85 plus, right? Uh, then you have Dark Ones. Um, Dark Ones, well... And the other one is the Vanquisher, right? Dark Ones and Vanquisher, it, it's not really that much about level, it's more about like whenever you are able to survive dungeons that you need to do in, or in order to get the items, right? Oh, you're doing Arcane. I mean, uh, Ashen Lake, what the hell am I saying? Ashen Lake, uh, hello, hello. Oh, so you have this boss here in the Sunday Noises, right? And he's, uh... Well... He can hurt a lot, so... Try to kite him around a little bit. 78 at the very least, yeah. I think, like, around 80 is, like, a good... Point to, like, start farming Krieg. But also, I mean, you have to, I don't know, about like farming Krieg, it's more about like whenever your character is like strong enough to survive Act 6 on Elite, right? Act 6 on Elite is not even that easy, right? If you're like playing a beginner build, like solo self hunt, right? So like most of the time it will rather depend on your level and your gear, I mean, on your your gear and your character and your skill right? than on your level to be honest. For every content on each difficulty. I'm gonna skip stuff on Elite probably because Elite is kinda boring to be honest. I mean that's not really boring boring but I can't really like show people lots of new stuff on Elite right? Like some quests are ultimate only, but there are no like quests that you have on Elite that you didn't have on normal before, right? Like normal and Elite are basically the same thing. And then Ultimate has like additional quests, right? Also over here in the Hardened Chasm, you have like the secret way here. And this one will Well take you to uh, the third seal of Morganeth, right? So my uh, <clears throat> my plan is to basically do like all the well main campaign stuff and like some of the like uh, side quests on normal, and then just do like Act One to Four and Elite, and also to do um, Hidden Path on Elite, right? And then maybe farm some reputation as well on Elite, depending on like which augments I need, right? And then just go to ultimate. Are you sure the same uh, Creek's uh, set drop rate is the same on elite and ultimate? Uh, as far as I know, it should be about the same, but I don't know. It's definitely easier. Like even if the drop rate was lower in elite, it should be easier and probably even faster for you to farm it on elite because like elite is gonna be like way easier to farm for you, right? Because, like, Ultimate Act 6 is really uh, not that easy if you don't have, like, a good character. Yeah, that's Epoch looks promising. That's true. Baldur's Gate 3 and Diablo 4. I mean, 
Honestly, I'm excited about Diablo 4 as well, just because it is like another ARPG that could possibly be good. But I don't have like high hopes for it, like I don't expect anything, I'm just trying to not, not expect anything, because if I would expect anything I would probably get disappointed anyways. So I'm just trying to not uh, expect anything. That said, I'm still kinda hyped for it, and like if it's out and if it looks good I would probably play it as well. I'm not sure like for how long, but we'll see. I guess it's like way too early to say anything about D D4 to be honest, like uh, BlizzCon reveal was um, it was okay I would say. It wasn't like oh my god it's so, super good, it wasn't like oh my god it's gonna be trashed, it's also like okay I would say. Like, they still have like lots of uh, options open right, and like directions open. Hey, each one, each one, how you, man? Welcome, welcome. Because Warhammer is such an original IP. I mean... It's more original than Blizzard, like anything that Blizzard has come up with, right? And hey, Fresh Chive, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Stand in the door frame. And yo, mechanical engineer, how are you, man? And thanks for the birds, how are you, man? Thirty seconds commercial, really? Uh, what? Did you get a thirty seconds commercial on my channel? What? The? I'm probably getting like that's like an automatic commercial, and I probably got like I don't know. 0 0.0001 dollars off of that, right? Uh, I did like 50 runs in the late and only got boots, maybe bad luck. Yeah, maybe you're just unlucky. Just get them blow. Now, I, I don't know too much about creek farming, to be honest, because... Um, like, I don't have any exact data. I didn't never do some, like, spreadsheet, like... Um, what's it called? Mike Fitch probably has done. And, I mean, when AOM came out, right, everybody was, like, playing Creek set because that was, like, the new target farm world set, right, and everybody was hyped about it. But I was, like, looking at it and was like, well, it's kind of boring. So I never really, like, focused on, like, farming Creek set ever. I just got it randomly at some point after, like, hundreds of hours of, like, randomly doing X6 when, like, doing new characters anyway. But I never really, like, tried to target farm it. Mike Fish, <laughs> come on, Mike Fish, obviously. Yeah, something like Seasons would be maybe awesome in Grim Dawn, but I mean, let's face reality, right? Grim Dawn is an offline game, and uh, Seasons in like offline games are kind of pointless, right? Why would you have Seasons in an offline game? Um, seasons only really make sense when you have like servers and like online game, like online play, right? So, yeah, maybe for Grim Dawn 2, right? That would be nice. And uh, in my opinion, they should make Grim Dawn 2 uh, the same way as Wilson was done, actually. Like, the one thing about Wilson that I did like is that you have offline and online mode, right? And, uh, yeah, that way, like, people can play Grim Dawn offline if they want to, just like Grim Dawn 1, right? Or they can play it online, and then you have, like, seasonal content in online mode as well. That would be nice. Or maybe even ladders, right, or something like that. When I first started playing Grim Dawn, I... Also got... Well, I wouldn't say bored, but... I didn't play the game for quite a while between the first, like, between Vanilla and the first expansion. Because, like, after I was through Vanilla, right, there was, like, nothing I to do, right? And back then, gear choices weren't as, um, 
awesome as now, because you didn't have skill modifiers, for example. Uh, because of that, yeah, I actually got bored of Grim Dawn back then. After, like, defeating uh, the main game on, like, all difficulties, right? And, like, online play or, like, ladders or something, something like that would have helped um, to, like, keep up interest, right? To, like, keep interest high. Also, these empowered Mistwalker leggings are really good, actually. I mean, I would lose 10 resistance and plus to Heart of the Wild, but also gain Physrus, Aetherus, and Delmetrus. I mean, I already have Aether and Physrus on the ones that I'm using right now. Um... I mean, these are good. I'm gonna keep them, right? I'm not gonna use them now, because I don't need them now. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep them definitely. Elaine was with the material. Yes, traveler. Now do some bane skip. So, all right. So if anybody doesn't like to play some bane noises, this is what you can do. I mean, I don't recommend it for new players because you should just play the game, right? You shouldn't do these crazy things, but I mean, since I showed you the Astrakhan skip as well, I might as well show, show, show you this one here. So you stand like over here, right? You open the map and you need the Karen Docks Rift Gate, right? And then you like click on one of these dummies and then you click here on the Karen Docks, Docks, right? And you can also do it as like you need a Shadow Strike or a Blitz ability, right? And you can also like pause the game in between to like move the mouse if that's like makes things easier for you, right? Like this. And then you click here. And, uh... Yeah, that's how you basically skip this oasis, right? You can get the portal, probably. And, uh... Yeah, you're gonna be over here in this corner, and then you can just go down here into the Howling Chasm, right? It's... Well, it's pretty fun. It doesn't like skip too much actually. Like compared to Astakar, I feel like this area is a little bit smaller. But it's pretty nice. Also, since I'm showing skips, right? I could just go show you like the Act 6 skips as well, right? There's a Act 6 skip for Candle District and one for Seacap District, right? The one for Candle District works like this. Um, you go to... Uh, it's like actually even better if you haven't lowered the bridge yet, right? So if you haven't lowered this bridge, this skip is gonna work um, like more consistently. If you have lowered the bridge, it's... I mean, you don't need it anymore as badly anyways, right? Um, but yeah, wait, we have to go to Candle District first, actually. Uh, yeah, so we need to... Yeah, so you need to go to the sewers first, right? And then, um, you need to, like, you are here, right, in Act 6. And then you talk to these guys, blah, blah, blah. You take, pick up the quests, etc. You pick up the quest for Kind District, the main quest. Then you are over here. And then you need to move, like, over here. Right. Let's clear these guys, they might be a little bit annoying. So, you need to put the portal, like, somewhere around this side here. And if you put the portal, you have to, like, check out whether or not the portal is, like, over here or... Right. Yeah, if you put the portal here... I think this is where you have to put it, right? Okay, let's try the other one. I'm gonna show you one more. I'm gonna show you... This one should work, right? This one should definitely work. And uh, it's gonna be the Steel Cap District. Skip. And this one you do over here at the Sorus Bastion, right? And how does it work? You walk up here the stairs to, like, the Death's Vigil, right? And then you have, see these Chthonian guys down here, right? You open up the map, and you Shadow Strike to these guys, and then you click on the Steel Cap District Rift, right? 
So once you have the steel cap district rift, you can do the steel cap skip. Yeah, at least like halfway, halfway, right? It's not super duper consistent as well, but it does work at least like halfway, right? And this can save you lots of time if you want to like speedrun. But yeah, what did you say? There's another one for... For like another part here as well. Let me reset and try again Canada District. Like, does Canada District skip should work? I have no idea why it doesn't work. For Temple of Azure. I was six to nine, thanks. <laughs> There we go. There we fucking go. Finally. Hold a shot. Okay, yeah, this is how you skip Candle District. And uh, if you have the bridge closed, then um, you will stop, like, at the bridge, right? Or, like, here in the corner, actually. And that's how you, like, completely skip all of Candle District. And you just have to, like, kill the mountain and then, like, lower the bridge. So you have to. Put the portal, I think it's like mostly about the position of the portal, right? You have to put the portal, you have to have it, like on the big map, you have to like see it between these two and not over here. And it has to be like around, well here, right? Around this position. Alright, we can finally move on and yeah, I could show you like one more skip, right? The Temple of Azir skip apparently. You could just walk over the bridge. <laughs> So again, this one is very similar to the uh, one on the oasis, right? And uh, you walk over here, right? And then you click here and click on the Azure Rift, right? Probably faster than this. Yeah, faster than this. <laughs> also, over cautious gamer, thank you so much for the sub. Very much appreciated, and welcome to the stream. No, I did it wrong. Wait, what? I'm just... Shit. The previous rift? Oh, okay. Oh, my bad now. Alright, so Temple of Azure skip. So you walk over here, again, to the Fort Icon stairs. And then you click here, and then you click on this Coven Plateau rift, right? So like this. And yeah, this is how you skip this uh, part of Ozir. This one is pretty good, actually. It's like really, really good. Oh, wait, you, you beat here and then you. Wait, is this like always where you add up? Or is this like buggy? Anyway, it's like still pretty good. But yeah, enough uh, skipping, we're gonna continue here with like normal uh, Act six, uh, 7 stuff, right? I hear you've done some excellent work around here. So we are in the Vanguard of, of the 3, and uh, yeah, we've got some couple of like 3 quests here to do. <clears throat> yeah, but I mean, okay, then mine was actually better than the one that you had. And, like, if you skip all the way to next to the Levinus's rings, that's actually not as good for like speedrunning, right? Because you do wanna proceed the normal way and unless you need Levinus's ring for speedrunning, I mean you could use it actually, right? It's maybe not that bad. What's the purpose purpose of having savagery when your main damage is from Pox, Sigil and Locust? Uh I don't have savagery. But you mean uh, on my Conjurer, like the end game? Um, I'm using a 2 ender on that version, right? And Savagery does give me 8% physical resistance. 
and also offensive and defensive ability as well as slow resistance. So it's about um, yeah, it's about OA, DA, and physical resistance basically. It's about giving yourself a well OA, DA, and physical resistance buff. That's what it's about. It's not for damage, just for the buff. Uh, Locust, uh, he's talking about the Warring Swarm rant. That's Locust. Also, we have another shrine here. Seems good. And now that we have Ratosh, right, on our vitality board, you also want to go for Dying God. And uh, to proceed to Dying God, we need like well, one more red and uh, lots of blues. And blues are gonna give me like lots of defensive stats anyway, so that's very much appreciated. And I'm gonna start off with the Satyr's Guide probably, because that one gives me like physical resistance, movement speed, and a couple of like elemental resistance types as well. And yeah, I think it's actually giving me cold and lightning, right? And I need cold and lightning mostly. I don't really need fire that badly. I don't need fire at all, to be honest. Yeah, Swarm is just a debuff in the end game. And when you go Totem, well... It's, it's a little bit more damage than uh, Swarm, definitely, because of Dark One set. But it's also not like the main damage, especially after the when you go totem damage nerf to dark ones, it's not gonna be like the main damage source anyway. Yeah, no problem, like, if you're new to the game, then, like, no question is uh, stupid enough, right? Or, like, too stupid. Uh, also, we have Ketan Thun here, and uh, as I s told you on my last episode, right, when I did Act 5 and 6, if you save the Chthonians here in the Morndale Rift, you will get this boss, and if you don't save them, you will get another boss here, or, like, three other bosses, actually. And both this version and the other three bosses have a monster in frequent, on ultimate at least, that uh, might be interesting for you, depending on like which build you're playing. Right, where's the... there it is, right. Now so we're gonna um, summon our buddy here. This guy uh, looks like an enemy, but he's actually a friend, and he's gonna fight alongside you later in this act. If you are excited with Fizzmin at least. And yeah, this part can be skipped as well, there's like nothing of interest there. I'm just gonna proceed uh, north and west. And more useful than aggro. <laughs> Why do you say such things, man? Agrum gave you soup. Maybe bad soup, though. Man, we all got Corona because of Algram. No skips for these areas. Yeah. I should check, like, just the... Okay. I'm gonna cut this again on YouTube, right? I could try one. So yeah, apparently you can do some Aether Crystal skips as well. We can try one after we have reached the next Rift Gate here, right?
armored gryphon set hard do they actually hello wait gryphons aren't like gryphons always kick w they're always terrible yeah, you're just throwing around me but yeah pizza's nice I mean, this area, I think there's like one hidden chest here, like around the corner. Other than that, the area is kind of useless, right? So let's check out all the uh, um, tombs here, right? All the ruins. Even though we don't have to, but every rune here is kind of interesting. And this rune is especially interesting because um, it does have a purple boss with like two different monster ring frequent scepters. So the first one is interesting if you're playing a Dreaks Evil Eye build, and the other one is interesting if you are playing a Aether Ray build, right? Sister Crimson here, this lady here. She has a Heal and a red scepter that she can drop. She's wearing the red one right now, as you can see. And uh, yeah, the red one is the one for Dreaks Evil Eye, and the green one, or like teal one rather, is the one for Dreaks, I mean for Aether Ray, right? There we go. Crimson's Vile Scepter. And also it gives me plus two to the Grasping Wands. It's actually not too bad because it rolled Shaman's prefix, right? Uh huh. Is this an upgrade? Maybe, right? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, it would be like an upgrade for every ability except for Bloody Pox. And also, I would lose my vit um, Vitality Resistance Reduction, right? Hmm. <laughs> what do you think, guys? Do we use this? Might be good, right? I'm not sure though. But, I mean, it also gives me like physique, spirit, health, right? Makes me more tanky. And uh, I guess it's like time for an upgrade at some point, right? Um, this kind of wants you. Or like makes me wanna use Dreaks Evil Eye though, right? Hey Fred Bacon, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Where do we even put the uh, Dreaks Evil Eye though? There's like no room. So yeah, we skipped the area between this entrance and this exit, right? But that doesn't really matter. I mean, this area is whatever. It's like a filler area anyway.
Yeah, here we have the next ruin, right? This one has uh, the preemptive strike uh, cost attached to it. So this is a exalted stash, which means it is a one-shot chest. So an ultimate again. This one would give you a legendary item. Yeah, once you destroy the three conduits, um, you're gonna find a scorpion boss here in the middle. Uh, the dust creeper, right? This one unfortunately does not have a monster in frequent that is like specific to him. Um, like the the boss and the Sunday noises that we killed as well earlier. Um, so I don't know. It's kind of sad to be honest. Like, why does one scorpion have two monster influence even, and this guy does not have a single one? I don't know. Would be nice if this one had one as well, right? I need to go back and sell some stuff, right? We are full for a way too long. Um, and yeah, I think I'm just gonna destroy my old weapon here because if I want to still use something like this, right, I might as well like farm a better, newer version of it because I have like a level 23 one or something like that, right? It's a little bit older. But yeah, honestly, like, getting this Praetorian set just like that while leveling uh, makes it kind of not worth to check out any, like, uh, shoulders, chests, or headpieces up until, like, level 70, right? Like, this one is just so good. It's crazy. Uh, these might be interesting, though. Oh, so we got a Beast Caller chest right that would be really great for like a pet conjurer as actually like, that's a really good set for pet conjurers right really really good and yeah these are both pretty decent i mean no this one doesn't fit right yeah it's not that good So I'm gonna retrieve this purified salt here, but I think I'm not gonna use it right now because like my aether resistance is really good anyway, right? I don't need it. But like, what should we use then for the weapon? Isn't there something for vitality damage that I can maybe use? Hollowed Fang, right? Hollowed Fang should be like a base line craftable item as well. And it's not even that good, to be honest. It's like okay. I mean, it's like a beginner item, right? Like a beginner um, component. I mean, sure, why not? Let's try it. What I think about Chaos Saboteur with Rosin Set and some other Chaos Modifier items. 
Um, I think if you're playing Chaos Saboteur, you don't even need the Rosin set, right? You just play the new weapon and play like Chaos Fire Strike, right? The new uh, scepter that you can get from the totems, right? That one should be decent. Like, if you want to play Rosin set, you should just play Witch Hunter instead, in my opinion. Saboteur is like only worth it if you play, like Chaos Saboteur at least, is only worth it if you um, want to play around the new weapon and want to play around Chaos Fire Strike. I mean, you can still like use some Rosin pieces, right? But not like the full set, and uh... Like you don't need a touch of chaos. Arf Reckoning works better with dual instead of two handed. Yeah, I mean Arf Reckoning scales very well off attack speed, right? And two handers have most of the time pretty low attack speed, right? And for Shield Breaker, like if you wanna do like fire Arf Reckoning. Um, the bus is the Aladra's Spellblade, right? <laughs> it works best with a shield, yeah, if you're playing Retaliation, then yes. <clears throat> also, yeah, the Tomb of Nephos is uh, also a dungeon for Dreek, usually, but I mean, it's really good to go for anyways because of the shrine that we just got, right? Yeah, we got another devotion point here for Sailor's Guide. Two signs of celestial portents. That's the uh, Aether Wind Devil offhand, right? There's a skill to make Sigil larger. Um, it gets larger which, with each point that you put into the skill, right? And also with overcap points. So, like, the way to make it larger is to, well, put it to 22 points out of 12, right? And I don't think there's, like, a um, skill modifier that makes it even bigger, to be honest. So, this is, like, the biggest you, the biggest Sigil you're gonna get, right? Which is really big, in my opinion. It's, like, big enough. 5.5 meters. We got another level up. It's just um, maxed out entangling wines, right? It's pretty good. We're talking about sigil of consumption. This one has 5.5 meter radius at 22 points, right? And also, since we managed to get all the three seals of Morganath, right, we can open up this forgotten passage here as well. Um, I'm gonna go here. And uh, just get the portal and then go there later, maybe, right? Or, I mean, yeah, is this good to do it like this? I don't know. I should have probably, honestly, like, gotten the... Mm, this portal first, right? The Corbin set the portal first. Oh well.
So yeah, we're gonna come back later to this place and uh, just grab the portal for now and then uh, go back to like um, hmm, Infernal Waste Rift, I guess. It's kinda unfortunate. But... Oh, wait, I'm retarded, right? I could have like dropped a portal. Oh, wait, I still have a portal here. Maybe this is still good. Yeah, that's still good, right? This is from when I sold stuff, right? Yeah, like usually, okay, like you put the portal here, right, before you enter. Um, Lost Oasis, and then you go to the portal, and then you, well, port back to your personal portal. Right? Obviously. Or you, like, drop a port here, and can, like, go for this portal first, this uh, city portal here, common city portal, and then you can, like, port back here, and then, like, get the Oasis portal as well. Yeah, the distance is ridiculous, yeah. Two signs and two nocturne. Wait, which uh, sign though? I mean, oh yeah, so that's the portents, right? I mean, nocturne is at least a good item. Nocturne is really good. <clears throat> and if you're playing that build, you probably need two of it anyway, right? So. I mean, you could do like a Pierce Shadow Strike Infiltrator, right? With uh, two nocturnes. Yeah, the sign is. Uh, like, the sign of Celeste Portents at least is a joke. I mean, there are like two other signs, right? The one that I made a build around, the sign of the screaming whale, it's pretty decent, but uh, I haven't like tested it too much to be honest, it's pretty decent though. And then you have the other one, the sign of arcane force, right, which actually got buffed and does hotfix as well, right, it got more elemental damage to cadence now. Uh, but yeah, I mean it's elemental cadence, right, it probably needs even more than that, but let's see. Also, since we have the messenger quest, right, we're gonna check out this volcano here as well. Which class do you play, Nocturne? Uh, Infiltrator, probably. Nah, I think it's like just an Infiltrator item, right? It's like pretty garbage for anything else, right? I mean, you, I don't know. Can you even play something else? Like, Blade Master would be an option if you get, like, good soldier bonuses, but I don't think the weapon has any soldier bonuses. So it's like just straight up a infiltrator item, right? You don't uh, play anything else but infiltrator on that uh, with that weapon, right? I need like a target to port here, right? Oh, shit. So there's a boss here, right? A purple boss here, who's, uh, well, it's kind of a joke, but at least it gives you, like, a steam achievement, right? As a Leon. You got Hyrian shield? Nice. And yeah, there's another shrine here, which you also should not miss, right? And yeah, we got another, uh, what's it called, skill point, which we can put into the movement speed here. So now we have finally maxed out movement speed, right? 
135% as max movement, sp uh, as like movement speed cap in Grimdawn, which is, what, well, kinda slow for like any PoE player, I guess. This is not PoE, right? So we have arrived over here, but there is nobody here, right? So we have to like handle the quest first to actually spawn in the web, right? Let's go back to the vanguard. Uh, which one, Arcan? Have you act? Interesting thread on the forums, but not as interesting for hardcore. Welcome. What a one. Hmm. The witch gods are united in this endeavor. All of our forces stand at the ready to assault the tomb of the Eldritch Sun and breach its gates. I'll give you a good price of what I've got left. Mm, do I need any upgrades? No, right, right now. I don't need any. Oh, yeah, the messenger also has two guns he can drop. And an ultimate, he also has a purple helmet and a blue helmet, I believe. And this one is actually decent if you're like playing Wire Smite, right? It's not too terrible. It's also Fire Warcrow, I mean, if you're like playing a Fire Warlord, right? This one is not too terrible, actually. And especially like the cooldown reduction to Warcrow is really good as well. Because Warcrow does not have 100% uptime by default. And yeah, this can help you with that. Empowered Hermit's Legguards. Uh, these also used to have experience gain, right? A rip experience gain on these as well. Um, they are pretty decent though as well. I should probably keep them. Just like I kept the other ones, like the other pants. These two are both pretty interesting. I might have to switch. switch <coughs> hold it. I might have to switch around some gear for Elite Runt. So. Um, maybe these are gonna be handy then, right? And also, um, I can sell those helmets, right? I actually don't need it. I mean, I don't need this uh, one either, right? Okay. See you around. So yeah, now that we got the Tomb of the Eldritch Sun uh, quest, we're gonna meet with Travis and Ouroboros here. You have to stop Travis. Ah. Yeah, yeah, okay, we just fought him out. Uh, he has some, like, volcanoes that he can spawn. As well as, what the hell, this disengage ability that went super fast because of his speed of rage, right? And also he spawns minions that have resistance reduction, as you can see here, right? And, uh, yeah, this can be scary on higher difficulties. And so... My misguided child lies dead, far from the land of his birth. I've witnessed many of my progeny perish over the uh, centuries. Uh, to the curse of my existence, but none stung Sounds good, yeah. as much as this. Hello, Horia, Horia. Welcome, he was welcome. Consumed, when Dravis confronted me at the... All right, all right. Rest in peace, Ouroboric. F. Oro. And also he leaves his possessions back behind, right? Mother's Pendant. And uh, if you have paid attention to lore, you know who to give those to, right?
This music's so random, man. It's just like that act Zulra. It's kind of annoying, actually. <laughs> it's, it's so random. It's congratulations, you killed a steward. It was like an average slash easy boss. Right? Purple Force Wave with Arcanor. Oh yeah, that's nice. Cheese is me. Oh yeah. Please give me cheese. I'm kinda hungry actually. Now I wanna eat, eat some cheese. Steward is hard, only if you get slapped. Like, he has a charge ability when it slaps you. Um, if you get hit by that, yes, then it does reduce like your armor or something, or like even resistances. And uh, yeah, after you get slapped, which already hits hard, um, you might have to like disengage a bit, right? So, there are two ways to do it, right? Either don't get slapped, or disengage after you got slapped, right? Breath is scary. Uh, yeah, on ultimate it's a little bit scary, but if you have like any flat absorption skill on it, you can just time that against it, and then, then it deals like zero damage. So if you're like having a Inquisitor Seal or like Ascension, just time it. I mean, you should have a Inquisitor Seal up anyway, right? And like Ascension, just like use Ascension whenever he starts breathing at you, right? Just don't get hit. Yeah, exactly, right? Kerpunk knows what's up. Also, hello, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Haven't played Grim Dawn for a week. Just sit quiet, watch and learn. Damn. <laughs> no, you, should, you should play the game whenever I'm not streaming, right? I mean, or if you have like two monitors, right? Just play while I'm streaming. Happy... Happy Masharona. Yeah, I mean, uh, shops are gonna close probably next week here, except for like supermarkets in Germany. I mean, everything's like kind of locked down right now, which was expected. Right? I mean, everybody who's like, "Oh my God, you guys are panicking!" No, that's like these are like the measures that they have to do, right? Because it's like necessary. And uh, I mean, yeah. Everybody who says otherwise, honestly, has like no idea what this is. Uh, that's sad. Where do we have to go? Like this is kind of weird. I mean, no, we have to go here, right? I'm, I'm, I'm just lost. More time for Grim Dawn. Sixty-nine viewers, Kriegism. Wait, everybody's already bored with Puddle of Exile. After one day, what? Nani? But yeah, welcome everybody, welcome in. Also welcome to all the lurkers. Anyways, so these two levels of the Tomb of the Eldritch Sun, they're gonna be more interesting for us in Ultimate, and I'm gonna talk more about these areas once we are in Ultimate here, which is gonna, well, take some episodes right until then. But for now, I mean, these are just like, well, random areas, right, that you, well, have to like fight through, and there's not too much special, uh, there are like not too many special things here. Except for like one purple boss and like a chance to get some totems, right? 
Actually, I think we didn't face the proper boss yet, right? He has like... Maybe four or five different spawn locations. Some of them in the first part of this uh, tomb, some of them in the second part, right? Wait, or did we like randomly kill him already? I don't know. No, right? Wait, where is he hiding? Did we miss him? So we have another uh, shrine here. It's pretty great. I mean, Act 7 in general has lots of shrines to be honest, so it's really good to like farm some devotions in Act 7. I love when people hate you, it makes my life more interesting. I mean, that's one way to look at it, right? Like, always look on the bright side of life. Even when people are hating on you, right? Everybody needs a hater. I just skipped him probably. He's bad now. Didn't I like full clear the first... Sorry, the first part of this? So anyways, there is a purple boss here, which apparently I skipped for some reason. I have no idea why. Um, and he's like called Brother Sicarius, and he has like two MIs as well. Which looks similar to these, but they only drop from him and nobody else. So yeah, if you're like, interested in those, you can look them up on Grim Tools, for example. Just like write Cigarios, right, on Grim Tools, and you're gonna find his MIs. And yeah, if you need them, farm them, or like, kill them, don't miss him like I did. If you don't, then well, whatever. Anyways, this is uh, Father Kaiman. This is arguably the hardest boss of the main campaign. The hardest boss that you cannot skip in the entire game, and uh, there are like two ways to approach him, right? Approach number one is be tanky enough to just face tank him, and well, he's just gonna die. And approach number two is if you can't face tank him and you start running, try to not get hit by the jump ever, right? Um, because he's gonna jump on you, and you have to like try to dodge that one, and he's it's gonna. Maybe not even deal that much damage, like the jump itself, but the jump is gonna reduce your DA a lot, right? So it's pretty late. crazy. Turn back now. And also, like, try to not stand inside of the fire ship he also spawns here in the arena, right? Um, I mean, all that said, on normal, he's not that hard, man. Right? Especially not when you're playing a boat like this. Option number three, melt him with insane DPS. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's basically what you just did. Also, welcome Scarlet Dragoon. Welcome, welcome. After all these centuries, the usurpers dare not even show their faces. I can hear you, Kovac. Who are these voices? Is it you, chat? Only ancient totems have a decent chance to give the legendaries. Yeah, might. Yeah, I think so as well. Like the higher the tier, the more um, <clears throat> legendaries they should give you on average, right? How long did they think their charade would last? I actually love this area because of like this. Uh, like Grim Dawn has not enough voice acting, right? But when it does have voice acting, it's pretty awesome. And this voice acting here by Kovac is pretty chillin'. Oh yeah, Krieg is also really great, yeah. <laughs> Krieg is like, actually the best one, I think. Like, Act 1 Krieg. It's like the best voice acting in the game. Oh, there he is. Spoiler alert, we're gonna kill this guy.
Also, like the first times I went here, right? I always clicked on every shiny chest because the chests here are like really big and they, I don't know, they look like they have lots of loot. Come, little human. I will make this quick. Oh, don't worry. I'm gonna make it quick for you as well. Right. Yeah, like these, right? But they're just like trash chests, kind of. <laughs> Come, little human. I died to Kovac? What do you mean, again? Cup. I'm not playing a pet build, okay? So I can't die to Kovac. Yeah, the um, new items can also random drop. Um, fall. Oh well, we don't actually need more items, right? By the way, uh, Kov, um, Kaiman, right, the guy I killed just earlier, he has the Sanctified Blade, that's his monster in Frequent. And if you're playing a Eye of Reckoning build, especially like a Shieldbreaker or an Archon that, it's like, um, that can support Lighting Eye of Reckoning, this is like what you want to use, right? At least, uh, like early on. And maybe later as well, depending on like which, like, rows you got on this one, right? Shapebreaker can support lightning? Sure, why not? I mean, Demo is pretty decent uh, lightning support, I would say. And yeah, this boss is, uh, well, it's actually easier than Kaimon because you can, like... Well, you can do what I, I'm doing, right? You can, like, put these uh, preempt of out. And yeah, that's stage one already, right? Look at him. You mad, bro? He's molding right now. music for stage 3 Holy shit, his cast is beautiful with meteors, it's like crazy actually But yeah, he just died, hold on oh, I kinda want these last little here, please, thank you Chief's glory, do we need those? Maybe. Probably not though, no. It's garbage. Uh, so this build, you mainly want gear with vitality damage and DK. Then why do you, then when you get dark ones, you get acid and poison for the conversion to vitality. Uh, you get the acid to vitality through dark ones and nightbringer. And also you get elemental to vitality through Darkbringer, as also well, elemental to vitality through the belt, right? So it's like the belt, Dark One set itself, and uh, the Nightbringer weapon, it's like for the conversion. Uh, Dark One has access to vitality, I, th I don't know, does it have? I think it does have like some conversion, right? Or maybe it was Chaos to Vitality, actually. Right? And I think it's crushed. Chaos to Vitality, right? It's Even Chaos now, to Vitality. His scattered followers are being hunted yeah, down Chaos and Vitality. eliminated. The Forgotten God will soon be a distant memory. Without a vessel, yeah, right. his Good story, Bob. Will... If you're interested in lore, you should read it. If not, well, I'll just skip it, obviously. Uh, what is the Smoke Dragon's Pact? I mean, Shard of Men here is actually not a bad amulet, right? I um, mean, this one is the Reaper belt, right? If you're playing a Reaper, this is GG. Even rolled max conversion, all the shit. 
Uh, also, if you're like playing uh, as a build, right, you want to switch from like normal perdition to empowered perdition by level 65. <clears throat> but yeah, for the build I'm playing right now, there's like nothing really of interest here, to be honest. All of this is kind of garbage. So yeah, we still have the Mother's Pendant, right? Kill Ravager now. I don't even have the reputation to spawn him, dude. I should probably just keep these, to be honest. And this one, this one, maybe as well. Okay. So, we are through with the main campaign content for normal, right? We have like one or two other quests to do, right? Um, first of all, let's check out with. Uh, Check in with Riggs again, right? This guy over here. Welcome back. So once you've done Forgotten Gods, once you've killed Kovac, he's gonna have a new quest for you. And... Well, he gives you like a random blue item. And then he has another quest for you. And yeah, like, his quest would be to like, find the seal of Morganeth, right? And then you tell him you've already opened the seal. And then he tells me to like, defeat Morganeth, right? And he's gonna give me a skeleton key for that. So let's do that. Also, um, if you have done the quest with um, Dyla in Morndale here, you will find Dyla over here in the Valley of the Chosen. Hello again, my friend. And yeah, as I said earlier, if you read the lore, then you know that she's like the daughter of Uraburg, and uh, she's like the one that you have to like give the pendant to. If you haven't, uh, like, if you did Act Seven before. Um, act six, right? She's not gonna be here. He she's not gonna be here, and you're gonna meet her in Morndale the first time. And if you already have the pendant when you're on Mor in Morndale, you can give her the pendant after doing like her her quest here, right? But yeah. Um, so one last thing to do: we gotta go to the Lost Oasis and do the dungeon here. Dark one only has damage reduction to bloody Fox and when you go to Totem, plus one summon limit to when you go to Totem, increase healing to when you go to Totem. Um, it also has the Chaos to Vitality conversion, right? Or not? I thought it has Chaos to Vitality conversion as well. Yeah, like, like global, obviously, yeah. I mean, it still has conversion. But yeah, it's not a skill mod, that's true. But like, which uh, skill... I think global is arguably better than... Skill mod anyway, right? To be honest. What's next after this dungeon? Um, on normal? Nothing, probably. We're just gonna go to elite. Or, I don't know, let's see. Also, there's another shrine here in the Tomb of the Heretic as well. So, that's pretty nice as well. So, yeah, more um, devotion points is always nice. Um, yeah, we want to go for Dying God, right? So, we need blue and red. What do you guys think about Gatos now? Is it worth to use Gatos over, for example, Lizard? It might be worth it over Lizard, right? On a Vitality build. I think I'm gonna go for Gatos here instead of Lizard. 
Like Lizard is kind of kick W anyway, right? And I mean Hound is pretty decent if you're playing, say, a Lizard helps with the heals though because of increased health. Oh yeah, increased healing effects, right? You're actually right. <laughs> yeah, it might still be better right, than the Gallows. No, Lizard has no all damage. It's like only HP regen and HP and health um, effect increase. Lizard is, generally speaking, a pretty bad devotion, I would say. From totems? But yeah, it increases all healing from... Oh yeah, you were saying all damage. Yeah, it increases all healing from totems and Sidra, for example. So yeah, it's pretty good for this, actually. Increased healing effect doesn't affect attack damage according to health. Really? Are you sure about that? Like, even, like, skill mods? Like, skill mod attack damage according to health? I mean, if that's true, then it's useless. It would only affect Blood of Dreek then, right? And in that case, I should probably just go for Gallows, right? I mean, also like early on, percent vitality damage. I mean, we're not really early on anymore. We're like in the mid game now, kinda. Or like we're start like elite is kinda when you start start mid game, right? Um, this percent vitality damage is kinda decent still, right? It's not as bad as in the end game. So let's try Gallows after all. And also we can retrieve this blue point here, right? And also I don't need as many greens, right? What is up with my greens here? I got like 12 greens, right? I only need 10 for this, right? 10 greens, 6 red, 6 yellow. But I need like 8 reds and 15 blue for those, right? Also I should maybe go for raise the dead as well, right? Because raise the, the dead is vitality damage as well as I mean uh, flat resistance reduction right when Digo's heal is affected so it's great and what you mean this devotions affected totem Oh. Yeah, yeah, this one is attack damage convert to health, right? This will not be converted. I mean, not be affected. But yeah, totem done. Okay. Yeah, then it's actually great after all, right? Yeah, okay, never mind. We're just gonna go for Lizard then, never mind. You guys know this better than me. Yeah, we're gonna go for Blizzard and. Um, Revenant, right? Like Lizard into Revenant into Dying God. That's what I'm gonna do next. Blizzard. Hey, Mr. Roboto, welcome, welcome. And also, hello, Mr. Sloth Motion. We got a formal invitation to his uh, to his dungeon, I guess. This guy's another watcher, right? So he has uh, like another breath ability, the double swipe ability, the clap, and also he has these like purple balls, right? That he spawns out, that he sends out, and uh, the purple um, projectiles, as well as many enemies in the upcoming dungeon, have uh, petrification, right? So if you're getting stunned in this dungeon and you're like, or like. You're not unable to move, right? And you are like, wait, what? I have good stun resistance. Um, chances are like very high that you didn't get stunned, but you got petrified. And for petrification, you need petrify resistance, right? So this is over here, and uh, 
page number three, right? And you can see that mine isn't like that great, but I think we're still gonna be fine, right? I mean, it's only normal anyway. Listerine breath. <laughs> Chilling. Fresh. Listerine. Also, this dungeon has, well, one small secret chest over here, right? Over here, at this waterfall here. Yeah, one uh, chest. Which is, uh, I mean, it's okay. It's not really amazing, right? How bad does Chaos Ravenous Earth sound? I mean, as good or... I would say worse than Aether, right? Because Necromancer doesn't have Chaos RR. But I feel like Chaos damage in general is like in a better spot right now than Aether, to be honest. Sixty-nine also four twenty, so perfectly bad. Probably. Yeah. Anyways, do I do I wanna use those? I mean, my scepter kinda tells me to use it, right? But is it good? I mean, it it would reduce my. It would reduce enemy physical resistance, right? Also, this one has like 13, 11 poison damage, and this one has 19, 62 poison damage, just like that, right? That might not be too bad, let's try it out. I mean, we're not really scaling poison damage, though. And we don't have any conversion, but let's see. Okay, there's like no damage, right? That really is no damage, it's actually garbage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what did I expect, right? Uh, it's still like okay-ish, I guess, if you want like physical resistance, like physical damage reduction on enemies, right? And physical damage is pretty uh, common, right? Like basically every single enemy has physical damage. Go defiler or apostate. Uh, you definitely go defiler for chaos, right? Yeah, I think so. Or Cabalist. And have no RR. Now, like, now you, you need RR, right? And uh, Demolitionist has more Chaos RR than Inquisitor. Also, these guys, right? The Magis, they can be, like, pretty scary. These are not uh, like a joke boss, actually. Especially this ability here can reduce resistances by quite a bit. Uh, in my case, I have good overcap except for um, acid, so you could see that they only reduced my resistances below 80% for acid. How do I have 74% stun res? Oh, you're sl oh, okay. This mutator is so good in this dungeon, it's like unreal, right? You got bonus entrapment, petrification, stun, and freeze resistance. Got kind of lucky with the mutator here, to be honest. But yeah, except for the Magis, um, there aren't really any spots um, of interest in the first part of the dungeon.
I feel like in normal you have lots of these um, tentacle guys spawning here, right? But yeah, this is like the first point of interest for normal. I mean, for the second part of the dungeon, right? You know, this uh, death room here. And also you have two signs of famine always spawning here as well. So yeah, using Dreeks Evil on top is like not good for my energy. I should just uh, get rid of this again, it's not good. This thing is so good on it. Uh, point of interest number two is the vendor here or not. This vendor does always sell you a purple mat, even on normal as you can see. So you could also just, yeah, just buy this one. And uh, yeah, he has some other things that you might be interested in. Some like Act 7 items, basically. Some like Act 7 monster frequency, right? Check them out if you're interested in that. Yeah, you can even sell skeleton keys, right? That's pretty crazy. Also, sometimes you just gotta play Tetris, right? And then you can check out this area as well if you, well, wanna have like, wanna have like a chance to spawn more of those like tentacle bosses, right? Um, but yeah, as I said, like I feel like on normal there aren't even as many here. Like on ultimate, you will get way more, way more tentacle spawns here. Oh well. Yeah, I mean you can also go up here, but. There's not really anything here either, right? It's like a random chest, but I mean, it's like a garbage chest anyway. Yeah, whatever. Uh, this is point of interest number three. Well, this is the boss room of the boss of this dungeon. And this boss is uh, not that easy either, right? At least not on higher difficulties. He has like lots of debuffs, like damage reduction debuffs, um, resistance reduction as well, etc. etc. Right? He's uh, pretty scary. That said, I'm normal and a bit like this, it should be no problem, right? And yeah, we're gonna get the quest item that we need for rigs. And we need room for those, right? For the Iris of Eternal Night. There we go. 
there anything that might be good here? Maybe like a belt? Hmm. Turin's steps. Night Hunter's chest guard. I mean, that one is gonna be garbage, right? I'm just gonna sell that one. Terror of the Grove is um, for shamans, right? Uh, and Aspect of the Garden as well, actually. It's like for acid conjurers, kinda. It's kinda weird. It's not like terrible per se, but is it better than Praetorium? Probably not, right? Like, Praetorium is such a good uh, set. This is gonna carry me along like a long way, even in Elite, right? The rigs and force of seven eyes. Uh, no, unfortunately not. Do they even use health pots? Sometimes, yeah. I mostly use energy pots though. Like. This build is kind of energy hungry. All right. So how's this good? Uh, it's not good enough right now. Don't sell components, guys. Unless you have like a, a full stack or something, right? I should check out metals, right? Maybe. But I mean, the one I have is like a level, I don't know, it's like a low level one. But it's like so good because of the plus two to sigil of consumption. It's like very hard to beat actually because of that. Yeah. See you around. I feel like I don't really need any upgrades. Come see what's left of my Still. Like, should be fine throughout like the half first half of Elite as well, probably. Anyways, um yeah, let's let's deliver the iris to him and let's see what he gives us. Hopefully like a legendary item. Do you see? <laughs> Badge of tenacity. Metal. Uh, I mean, this is really good when you're playing like a two-handed shaman, right? For example, like you want a defensive metal overall, or you have a shield, but it's even better for shield users actually. Huh. I mean, we're just gonna set up right? Also, you can click on the seller here right? and go into the seller. Um, this is already going to be interesting for you though on ultimate. I mean, you do get a hidden stash here on normal and elite as well, but this place is going to be more interesting on ultimate. But yeah, anyways, this is going to be it for my part 5 of this uh, solo self found beginner conjurer leveling. And we basically did everything in normal that's like worth to do. And I'm gonna see you around on the next one, hopefully. And next one is gonna be me starting out on Elite. So yeah, see you around, guys.